Well, let's, let's start our next panel. Are you ready? All right, we're going to discuss cannabinoid science. We have a giant panel up here, and to lead us in that, uh, we have a biochemist, a researcher from the National Institute of Biology in Ljubljana. Uh, let's welcome Professor Dr. Tamra Lachternshek. So, good morning, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, let me start with the words of Raphael Mashulam who was already mentioned in the previous lecture. And uh, he said that the plant that had been used for thousands of years, uh, all around the world actually, uh, from this plant we discover a new pharmaceutical, pharmacological system that is um, really of immense importance. And so, uh, unfortunately, he passed away, as we heard, but a lot of scientists, research institutes, universities, and industry is following his research because he is considered as a godfather of uh, cannabis science and medicine. So also this session will be dedicated to uh, actually um, medical research, actually research science-based uh, medicine, which is, and it, will not only be on research, but also uh, how to facilitate the research into clinical application and how to actually transfer this knowledge to uh, people. So um, here in Slovenia, we have a lot of good scientists, especially in natural sciences, especially in biomedicine and clinical medicine, but very few, unfortunately, for several reasons that we are going to discuss today as well, are following the cannabis or research or are focusing on cannabis research. And that's why it's very, very slowly paving the way to the medical application. So today, it's my great pleasure to introduce three panelists. Um, first is uh, our guest from Israel, uh, Dr. Ilya Resnik. And the second is Dr. Professor David Neubauer. And uh, last but not, of course, least important is uh, Boris Drucker, the pharmacist. So, um, uh, Dr. Ilya Resnik, the floor is ours, uh, yours. Now, uh, you have a presentation, please. Uh, Ilya Resnik is a very well known, uh, not only scientist, but a medical practitioner in Israel, and we can learn from him what is the practice in Israel compared to Slovenia, and where is Slovenia in terms of international, uh, international uh, picture of medical uh, use. So please. Thank you. Uh, this is my great pleasure to be with you. I love Slovenia. I love uh, Slovenian people. I had been here for several times uh, for different occasions, usually with a, a series of seminars organized by patients uh, and activist organizations of demystification of cannabis. It was very successful and many people uh, in the hall participated in these uh, seminars. And uh, this is my great honor to be with you this time and my appreciation to you, uh, your parliament member and the uh, 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 health secretary of Slovenia uh, to be at this uh, convention. This is a great moment where we are now, so we should decide if we are going with cannabis as a medicine or we should continue to consider it to be a drug, maybe narcotic drug, maybe dangerous narcotic drug, like it was uh, uh, established for the uh, last uh, uh, eight years. So uh, may I have a next slide? Uh, there is a matter of facts. We have a, a lot of people that are using cannabis for different medical purposes, but what kind of research we had been made uh, till, to, to, till to nine, uh, almost zero, uh, just for the last 15 years, we have some good clinical research for some uh, illnesses, and we do not have any conclusive results. European Mediterranean Agency declared that they could consider cannabis as a medicine, 
probably after receiving the significant number of conclusive research, but they never defined whether, what they are considered to be a conclusive research. So the matter of fact that the research in this area is underfunded, but we have uh, some good clinical trials, usually had been funded by the companies, such as uh, Jazz Pharmaceuticals, previous, previously GW Pharmaceuticals, etc. So we are pre performing a lot of clinical research, for example, in Israel, like you asked me, and uh, uh, for different disorders, uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, Parkinson's disease, epilepsy, uh, the Dravet syndrome, uh, post-trauma, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Do we have conclusive results? Till, not, till now, maybe not. But we could, who could decide and who should decide what is being considered to be a conclusive results or conclusive research? Uh, another fact is that we uh, now in the, in the transition in Israel, we in transition space, uh, Perform, going from the plant to, med to medicine. Our Ministry of Health declared a reform saying now we will have cannabis as a medicine. Is it real? Is it for real? How we can, how we can perform overwhelming uh, medicalization for cannabis and cannabinoids? Because this is a plant. And plant does not uh, hear the orders of our Ministry of uh, Health or Director General. So this is a, a, some facts. And may I have another, fact, another uh, slide? So uh, pharma, pharmaceutical industry providing some good examples how they're taking cannabis to different directions. So they could use all cannabis-derived components, or they can use different side of components, uh, making some medicine like Sativex or Epidiolex uh, be driven uh, cannabinoids from the plant. So this is one of the answers that we had been provided by the industry. And, uh, next slide. So we know that cannabis and cannabinoid compounds could be treated, used for different disorders. We just need to understand the nature of the plant and how to adapt and adjust different cannabinoids to the different patients and to his different diseases. Some patients have several diseases in together. Could we treat them with the same plant or with same uh, cannabinoid-based medicine? We do not have clear answer till now, but we are trying to provide it in the short future. Next slide. And this is an Israeli system that's uh, saying we are going to the overwhelming medicalization of cannabis based on the uh, two systems. So they are looking for only for THC-CBD ratio, and also they are looking for uh, indica or sativa predominance. Is it enough for, to, to decide that now we do not have a plant, we have a medicine? I'm not sure. And we su suggest that maybe another system like we call cooptation, so putting together cannabinoids and plants, together we could uh, make a cannabis plant as a medicine. As a medicine, but medicine don't, uh, without destroying the nature of this plant. This is uh, our idea, and I hope we have uh, another uh, m views in the panel, and maybe from the questions from the auditory. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I will just uh, ask you a short question, uh, uh, responding to your uh, comment that you were actually financed by the pharma industry more than by the uh, public health system or public uh, research um, funds. Uh, what do you think is the future? Will we need the more public research or the all research and application will be um, financed by, by the big pharma or the cannabis pharma? As I aware that uh, National Institute of Health in U U.S. funds only studies that's, uh, that um, target to negative effects of cannabis. Only they who could, uh, only such studies could obtain the grants from National Institute of Health, unfortunately. This is why I, uh, and this is an example, how public health system relates to cannabis and cannabinoid research. Yeah. So my, uh, my hope that private sector and uh, companies and uh, uh, different consortiums could raise a good quality uh, studies 
uh, that may probably will serve as a conclusive uh, element to European Medicinal Agency for FDA, etc. So using the combination or the cooperation between the public and private uh, sector will be... Uh, Pub uh, uh, public sector, I, I don't have hope for public sector. In Israel, we have Depend all uh, studies uh, that uh, we had been made in Israel. They mostly of them funded by the pri private sector. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much on that uh, issue, and uh, we'll then try to explain how is now uh, how is now in Slovenia. Maybe you should start later. So Borut is a pharmacist, as I said. He's a leader of uh, pharmaceutical biology at Faculty of Pharmacy of University of Ljubljana. So, board, please present your work and uh, yourself, actually. Well, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers. Um, I'm really glad that I'm here because Slovenia it is the leading one of the lead, leading uh, member states in terms of science and cannabis. But unfortunately, the regulation is, is still behind. So allow me to introduce myself very briefly. I'm professor of the Faculty of Pharmacy, University of Ljubljana, to link with pharmaceutical biotechnology and plant science. Uh, besides, I am UNIDO uh, senior um, health expert in Vienna, dealing with the technology transfer to um, developing countries. And very recently, I became a consultant for herbal pharmacopoeia at the WHO, uh, which is, again, uh, part of a uh, broad uh, area of research and, you know, plants and cannabis and so on. So I'm really uh, looking forward for these two, uh, I mean, um, uh, positions and opportunities. Okay, uh, let me go. Oh, yeah, I will do it by myself. So, uh, yes, first steps uh, regarding our group at the Faculty of Pharmacy dealing with cannabis. You know, for, for my humble uh, experience and opinion is that education is the most important point. Education at the first, not only for the health professionals, but uh, predominantly for uh, naive uh, individuals and patients as well. As soon as we'll be able to convince uh, the whole positive effects of cannabis or compounds from cannabis, a combination of their, um, I mean, all these compounds uh, to the public, this will be the ultimate goal in order to make the final regulation. So, okay, there are many this kind, actually not only congresses, but uh, um, I traveled through all uh, Slovenia and Croatia. I delivered a lot of talks uh, among uh, um, NAIF and uh, um, public uh, and some patient as well. And okay, this was, uh, was because I'm not active anymore in this field in terms of education. This is a, a task of my colleagues at the Faculty of Pharmacy. Uh, regarding the cannabis research at the Faculty of Pharmacy, uh, we are focused, that means our group, we are focused on the analytical point of view. Why? Because simply we need to standardize the material in this or that manner. Or we are talking about the flowers, or we are talking about, um, okay, something's wrong. I hope not from my point of view, but never mind. So, I mean, analytical point, it is the focus of our group. Besides, uh, now we would like to um, um, simply to go further with the research that I'm going to talk uh, this will be my, uh, my latest slide, but now here, I'd like to focus your attention. I'm very proud of this international dissemination. Together with Tamara, we attended at least two or three conferences and meetings um, around, I mean, apart from the Slovenian um, territory, but this one, it was something special. Why? Guess where is this country that organized this very important, this Eurasian uh, forum, and this was in Kazakhstan. Could you imagine? In Kazakhstan, uh, this was in 19, uh, no, sorry, uh, 2019, uh, and uh, it was under the patronage of the, uh, the Riga Nuzarbayeva, uh, daughter of former uh, president of Kazakhstan, Nur Sultan Nuzarbayev. So they were at that time, uh, I mean, they were really uh, focused on this point, whether to uh, make marijuana and uh, cannabis legal or it's still illegal in the country 
which is not the most developed country and in the country which from the uh, economically, historically, and even, um, I don't know, uh, uh, religious point of view, uh, it is something in between. So this was a very good conference and here are some statements that I try to uh, focus now. I mean, okay, we are talking about uh, recreational use, and we're talking about medical cannabis, medical use. Fine with me, both, but it should be separate by two different regulatory uh, uh, guidelines or laws or whatever. It could go in parallel. This is important to know. It's not necessary to be consecutively developed, and this is our um, ultimate goal to win with both uh, laws in Slovenia. And uh, very last slide. So yes, now uh, we try to find out together with the Italian uh, partners and guys from uh, Belgrade as well, what is the impact of CBD, THC, and the combination of other cannabinoids on the longevity or anti-aging if you wish. Anti-aging is something that we would, all of us, the more old we are, the more uh, focus we on this uh, kind of, or this area of research. And I was really uh, extremely positively shocked, let's say. This was a very fascinating keynote uh, presentation. Hibernation, cannabis, and anti-aging. You know that, that uh, heartbeat of tur turtles, that it is perhaps 12 per minute. The less heartbeats per minute is present in the animal, the older, in, in, in terms of age, these animals could live. So, I mean, this is something that we would like to, to, uh, to uh, re for the research, not only with the CBD, but also with the THC, and uh, preliminary findings that there are under-expressed of pro-inflammatory cytokines, gene coding from pro-inflammatory cytokines, and over-expressed genes that are directly or indirectly related to anti-aging. And by this, I will stop and I'm open for any kind of... Well, thank you, thank you. very much, uh, Borut. Um, uh, here, it's also my question. Because as you all know, or don't know actually, the uh, cannabis treatment is very beneficial for all uh, diseases that are associated with age, such as neurodegenerative diseases, Alzheimer, Parkinson's disease, cardiovascular diseases, uh, chronic inflammation, uh, also multiple sclerosis and so on, and especially cancer, which and all this increase exponentially during aging. So this is a very good news that we can also use cannabinoids, both to prevent or uh, to um, uh, actually slow down aging process. At the same time, the associated diseases with aging will be also could be also treated. So it's a big hope for that. And I think this is a very important finding. And in future, you know. Uh, we know or know that longevity is um, is uh, perhaps a problem for some people, but actually it's not because we, what we want is to keep older population active and healthy, and thereby contributing to uh, economies uh, to a great extent. Especially, this is called so silver economy, and that's why older people keeping them in fit. It's, it's very important. So do you think that we can perhaps use this then in uh, elderly homes or something just to, you know, to treat the patients or diets or something? Thank you. Very complex, very complex question. Actually, yes. But you know, if you are asking our uh, medical insurance uh, companies, they are not very happy to pay for pensions uh, till uh, uh, the, when the individual is uh, 120 years old. So in this case, this is very uh, <laughs> economically. But let, let me be very serious. Yes, I, I really believe on this. Actually, uh, our findings, not only our, but uh, it looks like that inflammation, it, it is one, yeah. yes, inflammation it is one general degeneration over the years. And uh, by the way, you know that obesity, the new um, definition of obesity, it is mild general uh, inflammation. So as soon as we are able to decrease, not all of them, but at least some more, the most important 
genes coding for interleukin alpha um, uh, B, then uh, 12, uh, 23, uh, um, 17. All these pro-inflammatory uh, cytokines are related with um, chronic diseases that are present predominantly uh, in the um, older generation. So, mm. I mean, yes, I believe, but you know, we are all, the, the bottleneck is re regulation. And on the other hand, uh, we do not have a very clear indications, or the list of indications that might be treated with. But uh, b perhaps this is the topic that will... This is the future, <laughs> yes. the future and of uh, research. And Professor Neubauer is uh, well, the right person uh, to, Professor to do it. Professor um, uh, he was for 20 years the head of the uh, pediatric neurology, neurology department, and uh, now we switch from older uh, population to children. And he is treating epilepsy uh, in very successfully for 20 years, and he will tell you about that, plus he will present uh, himself as well. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Tamara, for the invitation. Um, and um, I'm uh, actually a professor in pediatrics, but also a senior consultant in child neurology. I'm also visiting professor uh, mainly to the Middle East countries like Kuwait, Bahrain, Dubai, mm -hmm. um, but also to Kazakhstan <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Croatia Wait, and Zambia and so on. Um, I have just three slides, three different um, um, researches. We, we did it in this um, last, uh, actually, nine years that we are um, uh, using uh, different uh, cannabinoids um, for severe um, childhood neurological problems. The first one, and um, the largest study we did, is um, a treating resistant epilepsies um, in children. Um, resistant epilepsy, that means that at least two uh, standard anti-epileptic drugs are not um, successful. And um, the group we have um, taken are 66 children with severe, severe resistant epilepsies, um, which we call now developmental epileptic encephalopathies. That means that the child is having so many seizures. Maybe at the beginning the child can be um, normal, completely normal, but he's having so many epileptic fits, epileptic seizures, maybe even 100 per day, that his mental uh, state is going down, he's more and more mentally retarded, and even his motor abilities, even if his structure of the brain uh, is in the neuroimaging completely normal, is uh, less and less. And in these children, we used um, first um, cannabidiol. It is 100%, well, 98% natural cannabidiol. Um, and the success rate was um, extremely good. It is... Um, this is not um, working, but you can see uh, at the, uh, at the um, upper part, the seizure-free was in um, one-fifth of the children, which is 21%, um, and in more than 50%, the reduction was for more than 50 um, um, amount of the seizures. No? And um, also in the others, there was some improvement. Um, during the study, uh, two children died because of this severe epileptic encephalopathies. And now, it was, um, we started in 2015 and the publication was in 2018. Um, however, now we are treating uh, more than uh, 200 patients with uh, CBD. Um, and some of them, they were uh, those included at the beginning. So um, the, the, the period is now uh, nearly nine years of follow-up. Um, and um, in some of them, we um, switched from uh, the 100% uh, cannabidiol to uh, cannabis products, um, which usually our parents are getting from the States. This is Haley's Hope and Charlotte Webb. And um, the results are also um, um, very good. The second one um, is a recent um, trial we did in 
severely uh, behaviorally changed autistic children. They're not having only the autistic features, but the, um, the, the main reason that we tried this uh, cannabis product uh, was um, uh, their behavioral outbreaks. They, they had severe outbreaks, so some, sometimes they were um, aggressive, mostly to themselves, so um, self-aggressive, but also to their um, uh, family, so they were quite. And um, uh, we, we were using uh, the cannabis products, which is um, CBD THC ratio of 10 to 1. Uh, the doses are up there. Um, we never uh, go uh, more than one milligram per kg per day, um, according to the THC um, um, dose. And as you can see, the improvement was uh, actually perfect in all the 15 children. And um, there was a lot of um, improvement in their uh, behavior in, in different uh, domains. Um, the product was supplied by PharmaChem. Um, however, um, when we just uh, finished the study, um, the um, uh, drug agency of Slovenia um, prohibited um, um, the, this company to supply us, um, and um, we did, <laughs> in this way, we did a kind of trial of one study, which means that uh, each patient um, you ask the parents how it was when he was receiving the product and how is it now when he's not receiving and it was terrible. So the parents were um, uh, phoning and emailing me when the product will be again available and we do hope it will be <laughs> soon. <laughs> and the last one is um, uh, the same product we used. Um, this is CBD to THC 10 to 1. Um, and uh, the, the doses are the same as for these autistic children, never um, going over um, one milligram per kg per day. And these are for the cerebral palsy children. These are the most severe, um, oops, did something wrong. Um, these are the most severe um, cerebral palsy children, those who are um, bound to wheelchair. Um, and um, the results are very, very much promising. I cannot. Uh, give the final results because it is a, a part of the PhD study um, of one of our uh, younger colleagues, but um, uh, the, the, the spasticity is much, much less, and some of these children are even uh, sleeping during the night because they, they couldn't sleep because of these spastic uh, seizures, um, and the parents were also um, um, extremely satisfied. Thank you. Thank you, David, very much for this. Also for your marvelous work, what you are doing with children and how to, you know, also help them and help their families. But uh, you said that you had problems now with regulatory, uh, actually with, uh, with kind of nearly prohibition. <laughs> yes. I may say so in Slovenia, uh, the situation and the restrictions in regulations are very, 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 very bad in terms of uh, our agency, YASMP, which is our public aid medical agency, as well as our National Institute of Health, who all are, which all are um, trying to really restrict, even in such a studies that are so successful and so effective. Uh, we, well, yes, yes, this is true. This is the... Um, a drug agency, you know, from Slovenia, IASMP, which prohibited this uh, product uh, to be given um, further for the studies and for the treatment, actually. We did um, a clinical study, you know, yeah. of this treatment because they don't have all... They, they had these analytic certificates and I don't know what a good, a good product of uh, growing the cannabis and so on, but they GMP, didn't have... Yeah. The, the GMP, they didn't have. You know, this is the oh, last GMP. one. Uh, yes, this is the um, good medical product yeah, 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 uh, certificate, yeah, yeah. which is very difficult to be to, to get it. And they say at this PharmaChem company, which is a Slovenian company, that they will get it may, maybe within two years. Uh, so um, now, because we were um, uh, without the product uh, for the clinical use, because we we wanted to do a short study or short trial, and thereafter 
to give these children the possibility to be treated further. No? So we asked um, the um, company abroad if they can bring us, um, and if they have GMP uh, product, and they said, yes, yes, we do have it. But still we had, um, for two months or three months, negotiations with the uh, drug agency. It seems that now, um, for a short period of time, they will they will prove um, medical cannabis to be um, uh, imported to Slovenia, and so we can go so uh, further on. So we really have yes. a very difficult yes, it situation, is, is and this still, has to yeah. change. Mm -hmm. And that's why also we are having this meeting here to try to mm -hmm. find the ways to uh, facilitate the um, the drug use in. Uh, like it is, for example, in Israel. And how is that in Israel with the regulation compared to, let's say, Western countries or compared to Slovenia? I uh, guess in Israel, it's we use cannabis for medical purposes in Israel for the last 15 years. It is allowed, and the regulation, but the regulation is uh, unstable and going to the different directions. I already showed it in my slides that uh, uh, previously we had a very good system where each patient uh, were connected with some particular company and uh, he, he has his cannabis uh, prescription uh, each month that uh, permitted him to, uh, to buy cannabis uh, with uh, different strains and our, each patient had a, cha a chance and the right to choose which strain is appropriate to him and to change uh, strains each month. It was a very good system and uh, it was uh, some particular uh, funding that each patient paid by himself, but the, uh, but the price was fixed for each, uh, each amount of cannabis that was uh, very difficult to, to companies because companies were forced to subsidize cannabis uh, 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 for patients who had uh, more than 50 gram of cannabis a month. So now they changed the system and uh, regulation in Israel saying that each patient, and we now have 130,000 active patients with the license. So this is the largest in the world number of the patients treated with the cannabis per capita in the world in Israel now. And we, so we are still leading uh, in this, uh, in this mm. point, but uh, uh, each patient now uh, has his uh, prescription for six months or one year, and he is uh, going to the pharmacy and uh, paying much more uh, than he paid before. Uh, approximate uh, price in Israel is about uh, 300 shekels, uh, so this is about $70 uh, per uh, 10 grams. Is it m much? I don't know. Is it uh, expensive? Yes, probably yes. Uh, but our, pa our pa patients first to pay it, but we have some several groups of patients uh, who subsidized for this uh, uh, for this prize, for example, Israeli army veterans, police veterans, uh, terrorist acts, casualties, and uh, uh, also grew also patient, uh, people who suffer from the work accidents, car uh, collisions. So they have uh, insurance uh, paying for, for the cannabis and also for visiting physicians because now uh, cannabis now belongs in Israel to private sector. So um, mostly, most uh, pres prescriptions were issued by the private sector. Now uh, regulation is changing and it's going slowly from private to public health system and public health system is unready to accept cannabis as a, as a treatment and then is not ready to pay for it and is not ready to provide doctor attention to these patients. So we have unstable regulation, but the steps being made by uh, our parliament and I'm a senior advisor for our Parliament for Cannabis Regulation, Committee for Cannabis Regulation, they're making good steps in the proper direction. So I agree with them, but the system, the whole system should be prepared to this. And of course, I agree with my colleague that uh, doctors should be educated because majority of yeah. Israeli doctors are standing against any, can, any kind of use of cannabis. They just do not see cannabis as a medical uh, medical use, they consider to be part of the addiction uh, program for such patients. So, uh, so they need to change their mindset. It usually takes more than 10 years. Uh, me and my friends, we, try, we changed the general attitudes of uh, a medical community a, a little bit, 
but we, it took us 15 years. Now we, when the cannabis will go to pri pri from private to public sector, we will need another 15 years. Uh, this is what I think. And, uh, but you see a good ahead, and I am optimistic, and I wish uh, that Slovenia will go to the proper direction, learning from our mistakes and building their own uh, proper system that will be applicable to, your, uh, to this wonderful country and these people. Thank you. Well, thank you for this answer. <laughs> and um, education was already mentioned by Borut. And what do you think? How shall we promote education also to the medical doctor? Here I see most of the problem because they are not educated, they are not aware, and they are not interested. So what do you think? Well, yeah, this is a very a good pharmacist. point. Yes. Well, we tried in the past uh, several times first to start with the MDs with the uh, medical professionals, and I believe, Staff, yes, yeah. uh, particularly young, younger generation, that uh, they are quite open to this. But let me uh, go back. I would li like to recall what um, Professor Nobar said about uh, um, medical or uh, drug agency. Uh, I am not player the advocate of this, but you know, from the very strict the pharmaceutical point of view, uh, all kind of um, um, components, isolated or synthetic, are APs. AP means active pharmaceutical ingredient. Yeah. And they should fulfill all the criteria in terms of GMP and so on, so on, so on. But what the problem is, a uh, very slow reaction, very rigid re reaction, mm. and our goal here it is to boost to strengthen the system, how to regulate, how to, how to uh, allow regulation. But first, it is education. So education, hand by hand with the regulation. And I believe that this is right time now. Otherwise, we'll be a member state with the less regulated system. You know. But I think we already are. <laughs> we are at the moment. But, yes, but so okay. it's, it's a way. So what do you think uh, also about the students program, medical, or your ph pharmaceutical faculty? Do they, yeah. do they learn about that? In sure, this sure. Me personally, I deliver uh, two or three uh, lessons topics mm -hmm. on the cannabinoid uh, and the cannabinoid system. System, as well as uh, um, Professor Tamara Lach established an, um, a subject, uh, um, not only on this uh, particular manner, I mean, I'm talking about cannabis, but in general one, yes. And again, uh, younger generation, it is very open for this. And as soon as we're gonna have this one or two laws, I'm for two laws, we have to separate medical use and recreational use. Otherwise, yeah. they will be a mess. So when we will do that uh, with all this kind of uh, regulations and guidelines, that will be open, open space. Well, that sounds good, and <laughs> hopefully we will um, go faster than uh, like 15 years because you know. We are I just, I, I just wonder how you are trying to do it practically, I, because I'm a practical physician. I'm working with the patients. Yeah. So my patients are coming to me and asking how. M how much cannabis I should use every day. And I say, please try not to exceed then one or two gram a day, according to your prescription. So, but for some of them, one gram a day, it's not enough. And uh, some of them would like to have a farm. So the first, uh, the first uh, half gram will be uh, for medical use, and another half of gram will be for recreation. How you could distinguish it, please? No, I mean, this is a real problem uh, that is rising from medical community. They write such questions because saying we do not want to play with uh, recreational. Why? Because uh, people could be addicted. But we should say them that only five to seven percent of people ever could be uh, addicted, and they ever get addicted in each society about five to seven percent. So we, we should not uh, encourage any kind of addiction. And I belong to very, uh, very you know, cautious and uh, responsible doctors. I, I'm looking for uh, o o mode of use of cannabis in my patients because I consider them the safety of my patients is uh, 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 the the goal and I do not uh, want them to be addicted. But we should be appreciate also they right not to do, to, so the boundaries between so, yeah, recreational yeah. use and uh, strict medical use are not clear. So, but, so well, yeah. <laughs> uh, if I may, Tamara, Ilya is the same situation with 
um, let's say, all painkillers, uh, there are limits. And you could be addicted of this or this, some um, opioids like fentanyl. So Who is responsible uh, for but this? Yeah, but okay, so <laughs> good point. But uh, what we have to have in our hand, it is standardized material. First, standardized material. Patients are not standardized. Uh, okay. Patients but, are different. But a personalized but abuse, approach should be uh, But right? about abuse, yesterday I heard that it was a very good party. Uh, there, is, there is a limit with the alcohol. It could be used <laughs> or abuse. Uh, so in this case, you know, this is again education and titration of patients. I believe that you titrate your patient before to, have, to, to, to get an impression of the optimal dose, and so on, so on, so on. There we have devices that could do instead of us. But yes, it, 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 it's an issue. It's an issue. It's a, a personal approach, and how we would personalize the treatment of the patients. Is that a... The most important thing, that who are the patients? Because... Yeah, of course, my, but in, how in, do you study uh, that? In, in Israel, we, we have patients that are very, very experienced users, and they began the, this topic to be said aloud, a uh, patient who used cannabis, uh, and they uh, even uh, provide us some education because nobody educated us from the beginning. Now I'm an educator, but I educated myself, and I previously was educated by the patients, by the patients who use cannabis for their medical reasons. We, so we need to appreciate this chain. Who educate the educators? and who provide us uh, knowledge. I also was uh, uh, educated by master, uh, master, cannabis, uh, master class in cannabis by the Bedrokan in, in Holland, but, but first my patients educated me what is bad and what is good for them. And uh, my responsible approach is saying that I should learn this uh, nature of these, each patient, of course possessing the personalized approach, but patients are so different, some of them absolutely cannabis naive, and we should, very, we should take very care, careful and a very cautious approach to them. And some patients are very, very experienced with different strains of cannabis. And they can tell you whatever happened with them when they are taking this one or other one. We, sh we should different approach to each patient and appreciate the right to use medical cannabis for their illnesses without uh, preventing them, but uh, being making it in a uh, very responsible way. This is what I'm saying. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think we should stop here and give also the opportunity for some questions from the audience to this interesting uh, topic, uh, especially uh, on the uh, how should we uh, approve, improve the uh, the uh, the treatment. Are these pilot uh, studies, or are these actually uh, clinical trials, like classical clinical trials, or are these other trials? And I would like to. Uh, Maybe uh, sure. Thank ask you. Um, oh. uh, Dr. Cherbeck, is she here? That she may have some, yeah? Can you please talk about that? Because you have a lot of experience in oncological patients. We have a microphone for you right here. Let's hear it again for the panel right quick while we get it together. <laughs> Very interesting stuff. Hello? Yeah? Yes. Uh, hello, I'm Matej Czerwek. I have been working with, uh, sure, sure. Uh, with uh, Dr. Czerwek, which is also my grandmother, for 10 years in <laughs> cannabis research. Um, so I'm not, I am also a doctor, but not a practicing clinician. And I would have a question for uh, Dr. Reznik. Uh, in Israel, when you have the treatment of patients here, I know there's probably a lot of need to get further evidence about the effectiveness, because I would guess there's also some pushback from some parts of the medical society in regard to the actual effectiveness of cannabis. And uh, I would like to ask, are, you, are the questionnaires uh, 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 like the crucial part of following the effectiveness, or is there, how do you monitor the effects and collect the data of, or the effect, effectiveness of the cannabis in Israel? Thank you for the question. Uh, in Israel, each doctor who has his practice uh, with a can medical cannabis uh, use his own system. It is not standardized and it's not uh, randomized. So my, uh, my approach is quasi-scientific approach. I use questions 
like uh, quality of life questions, anxiety questions, uh, questionnaires. But you see, it is very difficult to apply in the private practice. Uh, we do not have uh, oh, govern, government uh, adopted medical cannabis clinics. Uh, this is why, I, in my previous career, I was I was scientific psychiatrist. I was a chief of research in our mental health center, so I use a lot of questionnaires because I am very familiar with them. It is not over, uh, it is not a practice at all. But I am also working for the, some British uh, chain of the uh, medical cannabis clinics, and there. From the very beginning, we decided we use questionnaires in order to follow up uh, and outcomes and the results, intermediate results, uh, from baseline to, uh, to outcome. Uh, so the, the, this is a poor, very good point to assess the quality of treatment, the quality of the uh, in intervention using the cannabis. And uh, in later, we will could have it uh, as a pub publication. So we need to de 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 derive uh, good knowledge from everyday practice. Thank you. Oh, Thank well. you. There are no questions. I would like to actually at last. Oh, you have a question here? Uh, oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. His hand raised was so small. I didn't see. No, I didn't yeah. Uh, I have a question for all the speakers. Um, what is your advice on how to connect the Slovenia's private sector with the public health and? Um, just to open the topic. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe you can yeah, answer that? Or? Well, um, I'm working in the public health system, so um, usually we say that um, prescribing cannabis products is in the hands of the tertiary care um, institutes, that means uh, university medical centers in Slovenia. We have two, public. one in Ljubljana public, yes, uh, one in Ljubljana and one in Maribor. And um, we, we do believe that um, it is better to stay within the uh, public uh, health system. And yeah. just to answer Matej, um, well, I'm a pediatrician, that's why we uh, use uh, questionnaires for parents, no? because uh, the children are too much handicapped uh, that they can fulfill it. We use two. One is the uh, PASS, which means Parental Satisfaction Score, um, which is a very good uh, scoring system and uh, very simple. And the other one is uh, CGI, which is Clinical Global Impression, CGI-E. Uh, CGII, which means um, Clinical Global Impression Improvement, and at the beginning we give uh, CGIS, which means uh, global, um, Clinical Global Improvement Severity Scale. So we just compare the beginning of the treatment with this severity scale, and um, at the end of the treatment, let it be six uh, weeks or two months or three months, um, the improvement uh, scale. And, and you will get a very, very nice scaling. And this is what, what I showed, uh, like improvement. No, this, is, this is simple. Of course, you have others which are much more complicated, but maybe um, this is for, for this um, practical uh, guidelines. It, it, it is enough no, to, 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 to give you the impression whether it is better or not. No. So thank you very much. I would like to... Uh, okay, yes, well, um, this uh, the last question. I would not distinguish between the private and the uh, public health system in terms of treatment. In terms of production, is something completely different. But what is important is that individual um, MD or the clinic is going to go through a very uh, uh, strict training before and to uniform, to have a... Uh, so-called national guideline, not like in Israel, but national standardized guideline, in this case it really doesn't matter that, that if the patient uh, um, uh, choose this or that clinic. I'm sorry. Okay, we, can uh, I? Uh, well, just one, one minute. We have a so, uh, we so, we have a so-called green book that was written by, by Israeli uh, uh, Ministry of Health. This is a book that uh, produced by the clerks for the clerks. It has nothing to learn from them. It is uh, speaking about imaginary patients, with, about imaginary cannabis. Uh, 
so they uh, they put the name of uh, Professor late uh, late Professor Mishulam as a as a chief of the staff of this book. And when I asked him, did he read the book? He said, never, 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 never. This is uh, the way. So uh, I, I agree with you that each country should has its rights to to uh, to use cannabis for the medical issues. I'm very sorry that uh, providing it to the clerks of the Ministry of Health, it does not enough because they are not losing, uh, listening to the experts. They are not listening to the doctors. It should be adopted to be personalized treatment. Thank As you. We said before. So thank you very much. I would like to just conclude. It's not the end because at the end I would like to present my work myself. And if you can just put the microphone, please. Oh, sorry. If you can just. Uh, put this video because what I'm doing is cancer biology and trying different cannabinoids in cancer and we are working on two cancers, breast cancer and the glioblastoma. And so you can see the in breast cancer we study the effect of uh, cannabinoids on the chemotherapeutic effects. And there are either additive effects or there are no effects. And this is very important for the clinicians to know if they can use cannabinoids along with the other chemotherapeutics. The goal is that we will reduce the chemotherapeutic and concentrations and instead of that, add more cannabinoids or maybe uh, do not use chemotherapeutics at all because you all know that chemotherapeutics are really very, very, have very severe adverse effect. And my work on, uh, our work on glioblastoma, we are using fresh organs, fresh tissues, cells, and we are using different types of cells and specifically we found that the stem cells, the origin of the tumor, and those cells, cancer stem cells, that are more, more resistant to chemotherapeutics are less resistant to cannabinoids. And this will be shown in the last video that I'm going to present. And please uh, turn on the video. The work was financed by a private company, MGC Pharmaceuticals. From Humanity Uganda. has been fighting a long battle with one of the most challenging and fatal diseases of modern times. Cancer is still the second global cause of death. Due to modern oncology achievements, not all types of cancer are deadly, but some, like brain tumors called glioblastoma, are highly resistant to therapy. Despite more than three decades of intense research and treatment approaches, there has been no improvement. In short, the survival rate is about a year and a half on average. National Institute of Biology is a leading Slovenian institution in various fields of biological sciences, including biomedicine. At NIB, our cancer biology research team is working hard to break this gridlock and help finding the new, more efficient way of fighting cancer. Our approach is to use combinations, actually a defined combination of cannabinoids, along with standard of care therapy protocols to treat most deadly brain tumor glioblastoma and to improve the survival of patients. We believe that this is possible by our innovative experimental approach using fresh patient-derived tissues and cells to test these new anti-cancer combinatorial drugs. In glioblastoma, the researchers at NIV have been trying to answer the still open question, which is the right combination of certain cannabinoids and in what doses to target abundantly expressed receptors on the malignant cells. This was found to inhibit glioblastoma and some other cancer cells invasion and forcing glioblastoma cells to die. Having expertise in tumor cell manipulation and analysis, we are pleased to announce new research results from the ongoing preclinical research program that supports and directs novel cannabinoid formulations in the treatment of glioblastoma, the most aggressive and therapeutically resistant brain tumor. The winning combination was a certain ratio of two cannabinoids, cannabidiol, CBD, and cannabigerol, CBG. This mixture successfully eliminates glioblastoma stem cells, the most therapy-resistant subpopulation of glioblastoma. This process is called apoptosis, so-called programmed cell death. This progress was possible in close, excellent collaboration with neurosurgeons and oncologists on one hand and partners from the industry on the other, especially the pharmaceutical company MGC Pharma. A statement from a representative of MGC Pharma. MGC Pharmaceuticals is a multinational pharma company with a focus on the significant potential of plant-based medicines with a robust pipeline of phytocannabinoid-based products. 
These are designed to tackle neurodegenerative diseases, symptoms of COVID-19, and more, where the company places significant importance on preclinical research and drug development. Our partnership with NIB was one of the most fruitful, and the ongoing preclinical research program, which supports and directs novel cannabinoid formulations and the development of cancer treatment, that has been one of the most interesting projects MGC has been involved in, and one that we believe in deeply. Further efforts will explore therapeutic targets within glioma organoids, which are the most advanced in vitro cancer model, mimicking the tumors in patients. These recent models are commercially attractive for the pharma industry for drug screening that can lead to more efficient patient treatment. We can offer a screening platform of 3D cancer models and we are interested in expanding a list of candidate compounds for advanced glioma therapy. We are looking forward to share insight about the advances and next generation of cancer treatment with you. Want to collaborate with us? I'll get it. Thank you all so very much. Let's hear it again. That was great. Very enlightening. <laughs>